Hello everyone, welcome back to another Toyota 3.4 swap. If you guys are watching this video, or you guys are either interested in my videos, my channel, or the Toyota 3.4 swap. We're going to be talking about this 5EZ engine that I just built. I'm going to give you guys a full walk around on this engine so you can see uh, so you can see the parts more easier. I can explain things more easier versus this being in the engines. I do want to mention a few things. I'll have links in the description. Make sure you guys watch my Toyota 3.4 swap guide, which I did a couple years ago when I did my first swap. I actually need to update that video because there's been some new changes and some better things that I've done and I learned since this is my fourth swap now. This will be my fourth swap. But watch that video so you get a general idea and then also I'll link in below the parts list that you need for the 3.4 swap. Or if you have a Toyota that, that has a 5EZE and you just need to do a rebuild, that should be very similar because everything's pretty much similar. Let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to talk about this engine, what I replace, and etc. etc. You can decide if you want to do that or not. This motor is off of a 96 full runner manual transmission. So the ECU and the harness that we're using is the manual. Uh, let's start off with the block. I did a full tear down all the way to the head gasket. The only thing I didn't do was mess with the crank and the raw bearings and the pistons. So that's the only thing I didn't touch. We, I went ahead, cleaned it, took the heads and got them machined or resurfaced. Went with OEM head gaskets, the, uh, um, the composite kind, not the metal ones. So all new head gasket. Down here is the oil pan for, um, off of a 3VZE. So we're doing this conversion from uh, we're doing a 3-4 swap into a 5-speed 3.0 so if you guys so you guys know what we're working on when you do a 3-0 swap you want to use the 3.0 oil pan and the 3.0 the 3.0 oil pickup tube for the oil pickup tube you need to cut one of the legs off and you'll see it when you do the mount other than that that's pretty much it for the bottom end we did went ahead and open it and like I said put new um, RTV I like using the black RTV gasket the engine mount, you must use the 3.0 engine mount. They are a direct fitment, it bolts right onto the block. So these are the engine mounts off the 3.0. Make sure that the rubber bushings are good while, you, um, while you're swapping it. If your rubber bushings are bad, then you might want to put new bushings while you're there. But you don't want to use the 3.4 mounts because the 3.4 mounts will make your engine sit higher. So a new head gasket. We did a fresh new timing built um, acing kit, new bearings, new everything, new front main seal. So new front main seal, you can see right here behind this. Uh, we went ahead and got a new fan clutch. This is the fan clutch right here that holds all this piece together. Fan bracket pulley, sorry, correction. This is the fan bracket pulley. And then this is the fan clutch. The fan clutch, I didn't went with the new one because I have a lot of these news. And this one looked like it's still in really good condition. So I went ahead and used the original one. For this swap here, we will be using the 3.4 fan clutch along with the 3.0 uh, fan. You don't want to install the fan yet because when you're dropping this motor into your engine bay, you might damage it. Uh, keep in mind that you can also use the 3.0 fan clutch and 3.0 fan. It doesn't really matter, but we just like using the 3.4 fan clutch with the 3.0 fan. If you use the 3.4 fan, I believe it's a bit bigger, so you have you run into some issue with hood clearance. Um, that's just from what I heard, but I don't use the 3.4 fan. This is a 3.4 power steering. You use the 3.4 power steering, all new belts, and right here where your hard line bolts into for the 3.4, you want to make sure that you use the 3.0 banjo bolt. So save that 3.0 banjo bolt. And that's the only thing you can use from the 3.0 right there. The alternator, I went ahead and replaced that. This is the stock 3.4 alternator. All the belts right here, the alternator and the power steering belts, that's all stock 3.4 belts. You don't need to make any modifications. This is all the stock 3.4 bracket. You don't need to change any of that. A lot of people, um, they change the belts and they get smaller size and they, they think that they have to modify the brackets. You don't need to do any of that. So all very simple, all new gaskets, uh, new timing though, new cam seals, make sure you do the cam seals. So that's pretty much it for the front right here. We will be getting new radiator hose. I'll go ahead and list that, or those radiator hose are all listed in the 
parts list. So everything that I'm listing here, if you guys need the parts number, like I said, click on the link below in the description and I, we have a PDF form, which is free. This is all free. PDF form of the parts list with part numbers, everything. And the 3.4 swap guide PDF form. This is all free and all free knowledge, guys. And make sure when you plug all your stuff back in, um, I like to use uh, the, the silicone, the uh, dielectric grease. Um, it just helps it. This bracket down here is what holds your positive wire. So make sure we use the, uh, we'll be using the stock 3-4 positive wire, which goes down here, goes to the battery, and it comes over here and it connects to the starter. On the side of the engine, as I mentioned, everything is stock for the power steering. Exhaust and manifold, we all went with new um, metal gaskets. These are all new metal Toyota gaskets with all new nuts. These 14 mil nuts, you must get them new. They must be all be new because these are all one time use. So you get them from Toyota. These you get on, they cost about a dollar each on partsq.com. This, uh, partsq.com, P A R T S Q O U E Q O U. I think that's how you spell it. That's the only website where I get all my OEM parts and they have some of the best prices. So make sure you get your OEM parts there. I mentioned earlier, uh, we use the 3.0 engine brackets right here if you have ac this is where your ac will mount onto if you're running ac or if you want to keep your ac you want to run the 3.4 ac but on top of the ac there's a plate you remove that plate and then you put the 3.0 plate on it hopefully that makes sense and again i made a video about that and then you use um you use the existing ac line off your 3.0 truck I don't really bother with AC anymore. I kind of don't need it in Alaska, and also um, I kind of I find that it's just you know it's just cluster. It really it's it, it takes this whole space right here, makes it inconvenient to adjust your power string. So I don't need it. If you don't need it, just delete it. Makes it more simple. So on the passenger side, that's pretty simple. Nothing really to do on the passenger side. Um, this is pretty much all you have right here. On the driver side of the three four engine. It's, uh, there's a few more components. Like I said, new gasket, new nuts for the exhaust manifold. This is the stock 3-4 alternator, alternator bracket, etc., etc. And then we also, uh, we, for right down here, oil pressure sending unit or the oil pressure sensor. You want to use the 3.0 oil pressure sending unit for a sensor. So when you take off your 3.0, keep this oil sensor. It's the same, same size, same thread, no modification. Uh, new oil filter 3 old engine mount and then this is the oil cooler right here where it would go i like to do the oil cooler delete this is a cap right here you block off this piece and then there's a plug that goes into the block right here that plugs the coolant um, coming out and then on the water pump um, we went with the um, with the uh, with the water pump that has uh, the t100 water pump that doesn't have the outlet or if you have the outlet right there on the water pump, you just go ahead and cap that off with the kit that it comes with. The oil uh, on the 3-4 engine, the oil dipstick is originally on the front of the oil pan. We went ahead and blocked that off and then the oil pan or the dipstick now comes right here. It bolts right here, comes in here and then goes through the engine mount and then comes on the side. This engine here, um, I believe this engine yeah, this engine here, I didn't have to drill it. Depending on your 3.4 engine, if your 3.4 engine is a uh, 99 or newer, you have to drill the side of the block for the dipstick hole, or if it's older, it already has the dipstick hole that you just need to pop out and it'll go in. So this dipstick hole, um, this dipstick is originally for a 3.4 T100, because on the T100, it's already like this. But on the Forerunner and Tacoma, they go on the front. So that's all you have to do. So if you guys are shopping for this, you guys want to buy it separately. I buy it separately because it's actually cheaper. There's a lot of place that has the whole kit already for you. But um, all you need is the tube, the dipstick, and then the um, the union down here. So if you want to look these up, we have I, I have that in the parts list of the PDF. But this is basically a 3.4 T100 dipstick. Um, you could use the 3.0 dipstick 
which you have to do some modification, but I just find that's a hassle. Why not just do something more simpler? You pay a little bit more, but it's all good. Um, keep in mind that when we are dropping in the motor, uh, I'm, I don't have any of the spark plugs and the ignition coils, the coil packs on the other side. I don't have it installed yet because I don't want them damaged when I'm lifting up this engine because sometimes the chains, the chain that you lift it up um, will touch the wires or on the other side it will touch the coil pack and it might damage it which it has before when I was removing the 3-4 motor out of the truck. So that's pretty much it for this side right here. We'll go ahead and move to the top. As far as the top end, you guys can't really see it, but we'll go ahead and work it up. Valve cover, everything's been clean. We put new valve cover gasket on the passenger side. We put a new PCV valve, which is right here, along with a new PCV hose from Toyota. This is a brand new one. It's nice and flexible. Uh, we went ahead and put new Denso spark plugs. Get the right spark plug. These uh, engines, they require the spark plug that has like two prongs. It's not your standard prongs like you, uh, you guys think it is. We also went ahead and used the 3-4 fuel line. Originally, the 3-4 fuel line, all it did is, is it just goes this way. And all you have to do is when you unbolt it, you just flip it this way, which will dump into the passenger side. And then this will bolt onto the 3.0 hard line. No modification. If you're doing supercharged, I think you got to get some kind of special fuel line, but we don't do any of that. This is all stock, very uh, basic swap. We went ahead and cleaned the fuel injectors and put all new fuel injectors O-rings. I didn't get the fuel injectors professionally cleaned, but I think it should be fine. If you want to, if you want to get them professionally cleaned, um, you can do it. And what I mean by professionally cleaned is actually getting getting it clean and getting it pressure test make sure that it's um that it's spraying correctly i didn't do that i just i cleaned the exterior clean uh spray uh, sprayed it a little bit and then put new seals we also went and installed a new uh knock sensor harness three four knock sensor harness which is between the valley of the um the two heads uh the, that's something you should do because most of the time those things are fragile and they they get they break up after miles so when you crack it up and you'll see what i mean all new intake uh, gasket went with the fill pro because that's the most affordable one so a new gasket for the fill pros for the intake manifold throttle body we went ahead and removed the throttle body clean all of that clean it wipe it down gunk it down put new gasket and went ahead and put a new toyota gasket so this is the metal ones you can use the metal ones or the one at the parts store it doesn't really matter they all work well and then while you have the throttle body off there's is the iac clean take that ic get uh, the ic off which is held by four felix head and super uh, just clean that really good uh, i use brake cleaner you can use any kind of degreaser mine was pretty gunked up but I cleaned it and then I sprayed it with my air hose and that's pretty much good. And also put a new gasket while you're there. It's really cheap, it's a rubber gasket, um, super easy to do. So that's all for the top end right there. Pretty simple. Um, this bracket here is what holds um, a couple of the hoses. This bracket usually gets bolted from the top. And I found out that if you take this bracket and put it on the bottom and bolt it on the bottom, you get a little bit more clearance because later on your hood will hit this if you're to do it the original way. So while you have this off, um, you can install this, which will make it easier. So that's the one little trick that I like to do. This bracket here is what holds your throttle cable right here. And later on, we will have to pound this bracket so that the bracket will kind of curve more down this way. Sometimes you have to do it, sometimes you don't have to do it. So I like to pound this bracket once I get this engine inside the engine bay and have the bracket, the, have the throttle wire installed so I can kind of get a feel of what it is. So this is one, one thing you will have to slightly modificate. This hose here goes to the fuel regulator, um, goes from here, down here, and then back to the fuel regulator. So that's pretty much it for the front end right here. Uh, I also want to mention that below here on the throttle body, there's two coolant lines. Go ahead and replace those. Make sure you order the Toyota ones. It's very affordable on parts queue. There's two coolant lines that goes to the throttle body. Get those replaced while you're at it because if you're using the old one, there, there's a good chance that eventually they will leak and they'll just 
um, it'll just start spraying coolant everywhere and that has happened to me before. So make sure you replace those. This right here is the rear end of the engine. Again, with all your connectors, I like to use dielectric grease, make sure they're clean while you're at it. A little few things going on in the back end. Like I said, we have the fuel line, which is flipped around. Very simple, there's a 17 mil and originally it goes over here. You just flip it around. You don't need to customize it or anything like that. You won't be using your 3.0 fuel line. When I part out, when I pull out my 3.0 engine, and I'm not going to be using it anymore. I just cut the fuel line right here and makes it easier on the 3.0 because it, it's going to get junk anyways. This is the fuel pressure regulator. That's the hose that I was talking about that goes up front. This is one of the coolant line that goes to the throttle body. And then this right here is also the one that goes to the throttle body. This one goes to the farther, the farthest end. And this one is the one that goes all the way to the front and then curves to the front of the throttle body. Uh, make sure you replace that. This is an air uh, vent line that goes from the valve cover to one of the tubes up here. I reused this one because it still looked like in good shape. But in the future, if yours is all hard and stuff like that, you might want to replace that. I haven't found a part number for this yet. So maybe I'll do a little bit of research and look for that. And then also right here, there's a few um, air, air vent lines that goes in a T. It goes from here, here, and then goes into a three-way split that goes here into the bottom of the IAC valve. I haven't found the OM parts number for that because these are pretty hard, but they don't ever go bad. But I think in the future, I would like to replace these um, just so that they're all nice and fresh. So if you guys have parts number for these, um, let me know. There are the air vent hose for the IAC valve. There's one big one and then two small one that goes to each of the each side of the plenum. Um, this is a manual, so we're gonna be putting a new flywheel. Um, on the 3-4, you can use either 3-4 flywheel slash 3-0 clutch. Um, but here's what I recommend. Since this is a 3-4, stick with a 3-4 clutch, 3-4 flywheel because it's a little bit bigger. You also wanna use uh, for your flywheel bolts. Let's start from the beginning. Your rear main seal, you want to replace that 3.0 3.4 they use the same rear main seal so we'll replace that when we get this engine out of the engine stand we're going to replace the rear main seal the pilot bearing is the same for 3.0 and 3.4 because this is pretty much the same crank for your flywheel bolts you must um, you should use 3.4 flywheel bolts i heard that the 3.0s are slightly longer where the head of the bolt interferes, but I'm not sure that's true. But I've always used 3.4 flywheel bolts and don't have any issue. For the flywheel, I use a LUK flywheel, Luke flywheel, because um, I can get them for about 80 to $100. And then for the clutch kit, 3.4 uh, clutch kit and clutch plates, I usually use the ASIN clutch, but then the price has gone up, has gone up on that. So I, uh, for this setup, I'm currently gonna be using the Napa clutch, so the 3-4 Napa brand clutch. It's in the mail right now, so it should be coming here in a couple days. And once I'm ready to install this motor, I'll go ahead and take it off the engine stand. We'll do the rear main seal and all the rear end. And the throwout bearing, once this goes into your engine, the throwout bearing that you use is not the 3-4, so when you get that kit, just toss that 3-4 throwout bearing into your spare bins for another day. And for the throttle bearing, you want to use a 3.0 throttle bearing or the one that is originally for your transmission. We don't switch the tranny. A lot of people think that when they do a 3.4 swap, they need to change their tranny. Your tranny for your original truck stays the way it is. So 3.0 tranny and everything from there on, you don't need to mess with it. You just need to change out your throttle bearing while you're there because, you know, why not do it? So that's pretty much it. <coughs> For the whole clutch situation here um, that's pretty much it right there and then our crossover we use the 3-4 crossover originally the 3-4 crossover it dumps out on the driver's side or on the passenger side of you know four runners in Tacoma we just need to take that 3-4 crossover and cut it up and then make it dump out onto the driver's side I don't know how to do it I have someone else that does it for me he does my harness and my crossover, so he builds all that. Maybe in the future, when I have some free time, I'll take a crossover and try to learn to do it myself because I have a welder, but it's just a matter of trial and error, knowing where to cut and how to kind of 
um, you gotta have a, you should have an engine so you can kind of put it on it and use it as a template. So that's pretty much it. If you don't know how to do those things, you can just pay for the service because there are a lot of places online that offer that service where they'll cut your harness and do that for you. The other thing is your heater hose. I'll go ahead and talk about the heater hose maybe in another video, but if you, when I first did my 3-4 swap, I just used the old hoses that was on the 3.0 on my 3.0 engine but if your old hoses are bad and you sh you're gonna replace them um, there's a few hoses that i put in the parts list in the pdf form um, that i'm gonna use but every time i do it i always forget to note it down so i don't have a co i don't have a consistent base part number of what i use so this time i'm gonna make notes of the hose that i'm using but this one here is a napa 9815 and then the one that I'm going to be using over here it curves out comes here and then goes over here so it kind of goes down here and then curves back and that one is a parts um, it's a gates parts number I think 192 19410 or something like that but you'll see it in the parts list so that's pretty much <clears throat> for the rear of the engine uh, you don't have to do anything really much these are the tabs that goes for the harness and that we don't, we'll talk about that later so that's pretty much it for the rear end now let's talk about the engine harness this is the fun part i'm gonna show you guys this engine harness i'm sure you guys seen it already you guys probably been watching this whole video and you're like man that's not a regular engine harness so this engine harness is built by john locally here he's a toyota 3.4 or just a toyota guru in general but he specialized in toyota 3.4 and he i have him do all my 3.4 harness and crossover just because you know it just makes it easier I'm not really a geek when it comes to wiring, so I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole and start learning how to repin all that. It's kind of a headache for me, so it's easier for me to just have someone else do it. This harness is off the this engine here, which is a 3-4 manual, and we're we uh, we're gonna make this work into our three our 3.0 truck, our 1990 five speed originally 3VZE. So I'm gonna show you guys this harness here and um, show you how simple it is. So you have one big harness right here. These wires right here, these four wires goes into your 3.4 ECU, 3.0 ECU, trash it, you don't need it no more. This goes into the ECU. These two wires right here, they plug into the, uh, inside the dash, or I guess the dash harness. So there's two wires that connect to your truck. So these are the two plugs that connect to the dash wires. And then you have your OBD2 wire, OBD2 uh, port where you can now plug in your tools and just you know if you have a check engine light so um the way i have it set up is that i have john wired this like well this is hidden of his invention but these are the only three wires that go into the dash and then this right here stays out in the engine bay and this east the ecu will be stored in a little gum box we call it so this is his invention and i um, i used it once and i liked it this is how i have him wired it up now so if you guys are ever wondering when you guys see my photos what's that big box on the passenger side that's where the ecu goes and then your 3.0 ground mint um i might just reuse this one and tape it up really good and go from there so these are so that's pretty much right there you have two wires right here is the start trigger this is pretty self-explanatory this is just the starter trigger that goes to the starter um, keep in mind that there's a different there's a there's a couple of different plugs these are the newer style that will go into the 3-4 alternator and then i think there's some older plugs that are for the 3-0 so make sure when whoever's doing your harness um, make sure you request which one you want if you don't if you don't know which one you want just tell them to stick with the original 3-4 um, starter trigger plug style, which is like the new ones. And this right here, you can use, um, we'll be using a 3-4 starter. Um, and the only thing we're doing is we're just going to be drilling out one of the hose so that the bolt can pass through. So this is the starter trigger. This one is the longer one. You can see it has two pieces. And this one goes into the, one of them goes into a 4 by 4 switch and i forgot what the other one goes into usually you have three plugs one goes into the four x four one goes into a speed sensor but i believe my truck doesn't have a speed sensor my truck is a cable driven that's why there isn't one for the speed sensor 
but and then um, I forgot what the other one is right here. I think one is a four x four and one is a tran um, the transmission or something like that. But this goes towards your, your transmission dry line and stuff like that. Coming to the back of the harness, you have one of this wire right here, and it has a couple plugs. One, two, <coughs> three. These are the plugs that go into the EVAD box, which will be placed on the driver's side. So that's pretty self-explanatory. And then you have this wire here. All this is, is this just goes to your injector. So you have three injectors down here, uh, which is pretty easy as well. And then it routes back out to over here. And it comes to one wire right here. This wire right here is what goes into your O2 sensor. You have your first O2 or the upstream, and then you have the downstream. You can see that there's a split right here, and there's a secret sauce behind this. In between this jumper, John has modified it so there's some resistors or something special in here because this is where um, it tricks the computer that we have a cat converter, which we don't. We have went ahead and delete the cat because on our 3 4 truck, we always delete the cat converter because we don't need that and we don't want that. So um, this is right here is for the resistors. So it's all heat shield up to prevent it from heat and stuff like that. So that's the sent O2 sensor. Coming back to the passenger side, we have the engine harness that goes to the throttle position sensor. One goes to the IAC. And then this whole harness down here all goes for the injectors and also the coil packs right here. You can see one, two, three. And then you have one that splits right here. Very simple. That goes into your, um, to these pieces right here. So this is your uh, igniter or I guess, I actually don't, I'm having a brain fart, but I forgot what this one's called, but it goes into this piece. And then this right here goes into your MAF or your airflow meter. So pretty simple right here. This right here will be right there by the air box. And then you also have um, the connectors for the knock sensor right here. Knock sensor. And then one connector for the engine coolant temperatures, which is right below the fuel rail right here. Moving back to the front of the driver, there's also the wire that where we had the one that goes to the O2. There's a wire that comes down here and it has two plugs. One goes to your crank sensor and then one goes to your oil pressure sensor right down here below the alternator. So that's pretty much it over here. And then on this side, besides the knock sensor, the, the engine temperature coolant sensor, you also have one wire that comes right here that goes into your uh, cam sensor, which plugs in here and your cam sensor is located right behind this uh, panel right here. So that's pretty much it for the engine harness. Super simple, super sweet. Once you see it, um, once you see it, the whole thing, you'll realize how easy and how simple it is once you have something done, um, do this for you. Another wire that you don't see or that isn't part of this engine harness is the wire that plugs into your alternator. That harness is already on your truck. And the only thing you need to keep in mind is that um, the alternator, they come in two, or at least what you should know is that on your 3.0 truck, there's two types of alternator plugs. There's the one that's like an oval, and then there's the one that's round. And you wanna go with the oval one because the alternators on the 3.4, they all use the oval one, and that's kinda like the newer style. So this alternator has an oval one. So if your 3.0 uh, so if your three truck has an oval plug already, it'll bolt right into this alternator. My case, um, in the past, all my 3-4 truck have all had that oval plug, but for this truck here, which is a 1990, um, it has a round plug. So what I have to do is I just need to cut that round plug off and put a oval plug in, and that'll be super simple because all this is just three wires, but that's something you just gotta keep that in mind. Go with the oval plugs. Or whenever you're parting out trucks and you see the alternator wires that are oval, what I like to do is just cut that off and have like maybe six or seven inch of pigtail and they come in handy because sometimes those plugs they do break when people are trying to pull it out and you can damage it so it's always nice to have some of those plugs on hand so that's gonna wrap it up for today's 3.4 video i hope you guys enjoyed this tour of this beautiful engine such an easy and fun engine to work on honestly i love working on the 3.4 engine now like i said this is the fourth time this will be my fourth swap along with my fourth rebuild. And it's just a super, super fun engine. Everything's super simple. 
highly recommend you guys pull the motor out or if you guys are doing a 3-4 swap then obviously you are going to pull the motor out but let's say you guys have a 3-4 truck 3-4 4 runner and you guys need to do like a head gasket dude just pull the engine out and do a fresh rebuild like what i'm doing i think in my opinion it's just worth it it's easier and you can get to you can get to fix mostly everything you can fix everything you want you can fix all the leaks that are possible front seal main seal oil pan leaking all that fun stuff so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys think that i forget i forgot anything put it down in the comments if you guys want more information like I said, check the video description, read the PDF form. There's two PDF forms um, on Google Drive that I provided. Lots of resources there. Honestly, I should be charging you guys for those forms. But again, I provide those for free so you guys can have the same knowledge that I have. So I'll see you guys next time. Any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Follow the Instagram, nuttynew underscore 4x4. Peace out.